Hey there, Robert Wiesahunt with MakeUseOf.com. Are you a recent convert from console gaming? Or maybe you've never started uh, any gaming at all, but now your friends, coworkers, or relatives want you to get in on multiplayer fun with them on PC in a game like Borderlands 2, Dota 2, World of Warcraft, something like that? If you're not used to uh, figuring out your gaming graphics settings, you may go into that settings menu and find a whole bunch of really mystifying terms uh, and have difficulty understanding what you should set to which setting to get the best results. So today we're going to talk about some of the common graphics settings in computer video games and, uh, and talk to you about uh, what sacrifices you might need to make in visual fidelity to get the performance you want or uh, what, you can, what you can set up to make the game as pretty as possible. Uh, right now, we're playing Borderlands 2, and it is set uh, at about the lowest settings in every single category. Um, the thing you see up in the corner there, the uh, the FPS thing, that's a frame rate counter. Let me talk to you about graphics and frame rate. Consider your frame rate something along the lines of like a graphics budget. Every time you adjust settings upward to make the game more attractive, your frame rate is going to go down, which means your screen is going, your animations are going to get choppier. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, that's okay if things are a little choppy as long as it looks good. But the thing about frame rate is it's not just about the smoothness of the gameplay, there's actually input lag involved. So the lower your frame rate goes, the more likely you are to have the game, say, miss controller inputs, or assume a controller input is going on longer than it actually is, which in action games and things that require quick reflexes can result in some performance issues. So Here's Borderlands 2 at super low resolution, and you'll notice we're getting a frame rate of about 120 frames per second, which is extremely high. Let's take a look at it at a higher resolution. And here we are looking at Borderlands 2 again at a much higher resolution. This is 1600 by 900. You'll notice that a lot of the visuals have been cleaned up. There's less blurriness to it, less chunkiness to the shapes. Uh, and resolution is something that's going to be hard capped by the resolution on your monitor, just like on TV, you know, when you get a 1080p TV, you can go up to that setting. Same way on your monitor. Um, the next thing to talk about, the other big one, is textures. Textures are the uh, are the images drawn onto shapes and characters, uh, and those are going to be either blurrier or sharper depending on your texture setting. So again, here's Borderlands 2 with a low texture setting. And now the exact same image with a high texture setting. You'll notice that all the lines on this girder in front of me have gotten sharper. Everything, uh, everything looks less blurry and less pixelated. Um, and that's going to be limited very much by the amount of graphics memory you have on your video card, or if you don't have an onboard video card uh, that is separate from your motherboard, whatever onboard graphics solution you have. Um, so those resolution and textures are pretty much the two biggest ones. But let's go into some finer points. Let's look at some other details. The next thing I want to talk to you about is anti-aliasing. Uh, you might see this in your menu as FXAA or FSAA, or even something simplified like edge smoothing. But the idea is that anti-aliasing is an effect that re reduces jagged lines on the edges of objects. So if you can see uh, in this scene we're looking right now, if you look along the edge of the girder, uh, or if you look along the edge of the window, you may see the appearance of a staircase kind of effect uh, along those black lines. That's aliasing. So this is the game with anti-aliasing turned off. And now the exact same scene with anti-aliasing turned on. You'll notice that that stair step effect has been reduced both on the edge of the girder and the lines around the window. It no longer looks like a little black staircase along those borders, but rather something much smoother, much closer to realistic, and much more like you'd expect when you look at something in the real world. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is texture filtering. There's a setting called anisotropic filtering that you'll see in a lot of games. Anisotropic filtering is a texture filtering setting 
that helps textures look sharper, particularly when they're not seen head on, when they're not seen uh, just straight ahead, but rather at an angle. So like the ground or ceiling, or maybe uh, when rocks, you know, curve and change shape and things like that. Without an isotropic filtering on, the sand gets much blurrier much sooner. So again, this is it without an isotropic filtering. So this is the same scene with an isotropic filtering set really high. You'll notice that the little waves and tire tracks in the dust on the ground are much more visible further away than they were without the filtering on. And that's because the filtering is making the texture sharp, the texture sharper both at angles and uh, at, a, at a far distance. Another one of the finer detail settings you can adjust is view distance. View distance, uh, or sometimes called draw distance, is the distance at which certain objects are rendered in the environment or drawn in. So you can set that view distance really low to keep less important objects from appearing until you're close enough to interact with them. Right now, you can see this really well if you take a look at that U-shaped cleft in the rock on the horizon. Notice that there's nothing up there right now. So I'll be standing in this position after the transition, and we'll see what happens when I change the view distance. Notice that when I change the view distance to very high, I haven't changed position at all, but it's drawn that little space cactus uh, out there on the edge of the rock. That's because I've adjusted it so that it knows it's okay to draw in objects much further away. We have the computing power to make it, make it work, basically. Before we transition to another game, let's take one last look at Borderlands 2 with all the options turned on. And with that frame rate counter back in the upper right corner again, you can see that our frame rate has gone down dramatically from when we first started. It was at 120 frames per second when we began, and now it's down closer to 20 frames per second, well, a sixth of what we had at the start. The number below it is the input lag, so you'll notice that we have uh, almost a, a similar multiplier on that input lag. And if you see me move around, you'll notice the choppiness in the motion that we didn't have at the very beginning when we had it on low settings. In an action-packed game like Borderlands 2, Dota 2, or anything else that requires those fast reflexes, that input lag could be the difference between succeeding or failing at whatever scenario you're trying to complete. So make sure you're careful with that, and uh, try to keep the frame rate above 30 seconds. If you're on something really competitive, you might want to aim for something even closer to 60 frames per second. Some games like Borderlands 2 have this built-in frame rate counter. Others, you're going to have to look for uh, external ways to discover that frame rate number. But uh, it can be a valuable tool for helping you get the most out of your gameplay while still setting the game to a level of attractiveness that you can handle. Once you've played PC games for a while, you'll realize and you'll notice that not every graphics setting is available in every game. So I've switched over to Guild Wars 2 here to illustrate a few more points. The first one of those is LOD, or Load on Demand. Load on Demand is the distance, basically, uh, at which objects transition from low detail to high detail. So if you take a look at the orangish colored tree just above and to the right of the character's head, you'll notice that it's a low detail model, the further tree. And as I walk toward it, it transitions in a higher detail model, that darker tree right there. So once again, I'll step back, and you'll see it swap out the lower model. Now, what I can do, that's with load on demand at low. With load on demand at ultra, the high detail model stays in from much further away. So I can keep walking backward, and that tree is going to stay in high detail mode for quite a while longer. Again, the more powerful system you have, the easier it's going to be to get away with that setting. One final setting that I want to talk to you about that's in Guild Wars 2 here is the shaders setting. Now, shaders can mean a variety of things, and it'll be called different things in each game. Unfortunately, 
they're not necessarily going to behave with a uniform name for it. Uh, but it's a variety of effects that are laid over textures to make the textures look more like they should. Rocks look more like rocks, metals more like metals, leathers and fabrics look more like leathers and fabrics. Take a look at the cliff face in front of me without shaders turned on. The shader setting is adjusted to low here. Notice it's very bland, very plain. But if we change the shader setting to a much higher setting, so armed with this information, you should have less trouble figuring out what graphic settings you want and what trade-offs you want to make to get the frame rate that you want. I'm Robert Wiesahan, and for everything technology simplified, Check out MakeUseOf.com and the Technophilia podcast on MakeUseOf.tv. This is the same image with anisotropic filtering set to a high setting. Very valuable so over here. Stay away unless you want to get blastoed.